So now we're back on the pull sheet. And if I go to prep screen, I'm ready to prep this out. So I say, make sure to go and grab two Verilite 2500s. Make sure they have 10 foot. And we've already prepped that ahead of time. So now, in theory, if everything goes well, if I scan 0, 4, 8, 6, and it's going to ask, hey, this storage container isn't on the list. We're going to add it anyways. And on the manifest, there's the case that we added. There's that that was added, that one. And looks like we put three in there. I'll have to check that. Um, so we have prepped all these items ahead of time container, all those items up to the time that we prepped them and scanned them out. So that is the main difference between an amplifier and a storage container. With that, let's see. Anyone who has any specific questions or any specific items that might show up on, on their personal inventory that they've got some questions on, let's try first of all to unmute or you can type in questions on the uh, chat button. So let's unmute and see what happens. Anyone have any specific questions on items? Uh, so with that, we'll do some questions. Are there any specific questions on types of items? Uh, if I were to look at some of my systems, I'll go to down here and walk through a couple items of what I would consider to be good candidates for storage containers. Um, mixers, again, if you've got cases for mixers, uh, this would allow you when they come back to make sure that you have very specific items inside very specific containers. They would still be available. Speakers, this is a really great one uh, for a lot of companies who have um, two wedges inside of a case. Again, you don't want to run two dual wedge cases, you want to run out the dual wedges. So that would be another candidate where the case would store two very specific wedges, and those would go inside the cases. Let's take a look. Um, again, anything if you want to put laptops or desktops, if you pack them in cases, uh, I've seen a lot of companies have maybe dual MacBook cases or even they send them out eight at a time for routes or registration. That'd be another great scenario. Lighting, again, unlimited possibilities, especially with lighting. A lot of times you're going to put uh, all these will be put inside of cases. Color blast, you might have 12 inside of a case etc. So all those are going to be some great uh, bits for items that will now be used as storage containers. Let's see, video. I just want to look at video and see some other examples. Other good examples, projectors, you might want to lens and the case or lens and the projector inside of a case. They're still available and prep them ahead of time. Graphics, you know, these could go different ways. A lot of times you have maybe a Barco Encore that has a very specific rack that has um, very specific items inside of it that might be part of a package. And this goes back to uh, a couple questions that we had from uh, a customer of ours who also uses production exchange to all their inventory um, on product exchange. So as an example, they have Barco Encore switchers and they want to show all of the items inside as available to rent out to other members of production exchange. So with that one setting as a storage, each one of those items, all the different rack items that be needed to rent out, those items are still available. And the way they would set that up is it would have the model contents would contain what's inside of it already. So 
as an example, I wonder if we have any of those built. We don't. Um, how can we cheat that? Um, as an example, let's go back to our amplifiers. If we wanted to set this one up slightly different, and we wanted to show each of these amps is available to rent, but we store them inside here, I would do a slight modification. And I would say that we want to have all contents available is yes, and hit update. What I would then contents here is let's remove all these items. And I would drag in this lab group in amp and say this needs items anytime it goes out. And then I forgot to change this setting to say contents are available. So what we changed with this item now is all of these amplifiers will now show as available unless they're out on a job. We've got 19 out of 19 available, so we're not reserving any as part of the package. And anytime we drag one of these amp racks onto a job, it will contain four of these amplifiers. So we are gonna reserve these amps at the time that we put it on the quote now. So for production change, they would now see all the amps is available unless they're on jobs that contain liner amp racks. So if we go back to our job, now the way this will work is when we drag and drop one of these items in here, now we reserve an for these amplifiers. And then when we go and scan it out, it will already have the amp rack and the amplifier. Let's see, we got a question from viewer. Let's see, is there going to be a way to containerize items at the same time? Otherwise, it seems like it's almost the same process twice. Scan the case, scan the contents. Um, that's a really good question, and we're always looking for ways to make this as efficient as possible. In a lot of the warehousing process, it is kind of a, there is an area where stuff comes back and gets just checked in to make sure it's back at the warehouse. And normally an item in as, um, it's gotta be, be teched before it goes back on the shelf. So normally there's a tech area where they say, let's make sure everything's functioning, turn it on, put some sound through it and make sure it's working. So in general, that is the time where a lot of this stuff right now is designed to be built back up. So two of the settings that we're working on with these items are um, on the contents of these serial numbers. Let's take a look at one of those. We have this setting here for whether they're permanent or not. And one of the features that we uh, plan to implement in the next release after this is the ability to, when these items come back in, should they be, should we always mark them as pump permanent or not? So for these items, as you check them back in, with them as permanent, they'll stay inside there. For an item such as dual Verilite VL2500 spot case, we're gonna have a, a setting there that says, we want these to be removed and every time you check them in, you know, it may have gone out, two may have gone out in the case 07486, but one might return in 07487 and one might return in 07489. So the process is, as we check those individual cases, we would remove them and explode them. And then when they go over to the warehouse to be teched to make sure that everything's inside there, that's normally in our build process where we would then... Uh, um, if you have a, a case scenario, if you want to send that suggestion to support at Flex Rental Solutions on are we looking for some new way that's in the sin, am I exploding it and building it at the same time, 
Uh, let's find a way that we can put that into the process and, and find a way to uh, parent to the end user. One of the things that we always need to be very cognizant of is um, allow users what they're doing at any specific point in time. So that's one of the reasons why we don't remove content and build them, but that doesn't mean that that's not up for review and to be changed. Any other questions on storage containers and containers? Well, with that, we want to thank you for attending the first one. A little bit rough, but we will we will also be uploading this up to the web later on today and creating links so that you can review this. Any specific questions on how do we put together or how do you suggest to put together very specific items? If you will email those to support at flexrentalsolutions.com, that'd be great. Hope you all have a great day and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.